Good morning everyone. Uh, welcome to my channel and welcome to my kitchen. Uh, today's a little rainy cloudy day so I'm in the mood to do some baking. So today's video is coming to you from the cottage kitchen. Uh, if you like what you see today and you're interested in seeing more just click the like and subscribe buttons down below and uh, check out some of the other things I'm going to be posting. Today uh, I was lucky enough to have my neighbor uh, let me go over and get some apples from his tree. So I decided that I would love to share with you how I make my apple crisp pie. It's delicious and we're all ready, aren't we, for fall, fall spices, apples, pumpkin, all of it, right? It's delicious. And it's being in New England, uh, I appreciate the four seasons very much because I love eating uh, food in season when it's at its peak um, of deliciousness, ripeness, and you can't get more local than your neighbor's apple tree. Am I right? <laughs> I mean, so uh, I'm going to share this recipe with you today. I will tell you up front, I am not a baker or a cook that um, has done a lot of measuring. Uh, I, I tend to kind of fly by the seat of my pants, but I am going to make sure that you have a proper recipe with measurements today. Um, so I first want to start by talking about peeling. Part of my channel uh, in general is about learning new skills. And some of you may have not spent any or much time in the kitchen. You may not have a lot of experience doing some things. So if you, if you know how to peel apples already, feel free to fast forward. Um, but I'm going to just briefly go over that for the people who are learning. And so the first thing I want to say about these apples is that my, my neighbor had a bunch of apples already on the ground. These would, are referred to as drop apples. So I took all the drops, and what that's going to mean is my apples are going to have some little soft spots or bruises from where the apple hit the ground when it fell. There's nothing wrong with the apple. They're totally fine. And so I'm going to use these. They're beautiful, um, fresh apples. And, you know, we're so conditioned in the United States, at least, and probably elsewhere, to go shopping and only pick uh, produce that looks absolutely picture perfect or as close as we can get it. But these apples are just as good as a pretty version. And, I mean, honestly, some of these are just gorgeous anyway but they do have the little bruises on some of them. So all you need to do is cut around those. If your recipe uh, that you're making calls for uh, apples that are gonna be visible, like in a tart where you have to have a real pretty looking apple, um, you know, you wanna cut the bruise sections away and only use the parts of the apple that are pretty. But for the apple crisp pie, it really doesn't make any difference at all. No one's going to notice. We're going to slice these up and we're going to add some spices and some sugar and then we're going to have that a beautiful um, crisp topping on there with like uh, oats and sugar and a little bit of flour and uh, so it's not going to matter. So I'm going to show you real quick about peeling an apple if you haven't done it. So the first thing you want is a nice little peeling knife. You want a small knife, all right? Something that fits good in your hand that feels solid and not awkward. You don't want your knife to be wobbly or hard to hang on to because you don't want to cut yourself. No, nope, no cutting yourselves. And what you want to do when you're peeling is you're going to take your thumb toward the back of the apple, hang on to it tightly with your other hand, and then you're going to angle your knife in just a little bit like this. And you're going to come toward you. Just dig in just a little bit. And then pull the knife toward your thumb. And then you're going to move your thumb back further. Okay, and I'm turning the apple with my opposite hand just a little bit. And then pulling with the knife on my other hand. 
Okay. Now, when you're peeling, you wanna make sure you're staying as close to the top of the skin as possible. You only wanna be taking the skin off, not the white of the apple. We want all of that in the pie. It's gonna be delicious. So you just keep going around and around. You, you don't have to have all one long string of peel. If, that, if it cuts off, it cuts off. So you just keep going around, moving your way down around the skin. See how see how close I'm getting to the to the skin that's very thin. That's what you want. All right. So finish this up. You'll get faster as you practice. And it really I have a lot of apples here to peel today because they're small. But if you've gone to the store and you bought. Um, larger size apples, you won't need quite as many. Um, you want about eight apples, six to eight apples for um, a regular pie plate like this for a crisp. We're going to just put those in, then the crisp topping. It's going to be beautiful. All right, I'm going to go ahead and peel the rest of this bowl of apples, which I'm sure you have no interest in watching and then I will be back. Okay, I am done peeling all my apples and I have ended up with this nice bowl full, overflowing. And in the process, I went ahead and cut out any majorly bruised areas. Um, so my apples are, you know, there's some chunky places, none of this matters. Um, they're all really good looking apples. So next you want to uh, slice the apples and I like to slice them a little bit on the thinner side rather than the chunky side. When I'm making apple pie uh, I want my apples cooked all the way through. That's a personal preference and if you don't uh, you just need to keep checking your pie during baking uh, with a knife or some kind of tester um, until they have the amount of give that you like. That They're soft to the point that you enjoy them. Okay, everybody's different. Everybody likes their pie a little different, uh, but I like mine to be cooked through. I don't like them mushy. Um, I definitely don't want them uh, biting back. <laughs> so here's my little trick for slicing my apples. Excuse me. <clears throat> uh, you're gonna take your apple. Apple. And there's a core in the center of the apple that you don't want to use. So I'm going to put my apple on the f upside down and I'm just going to cut to the edge of that core and right straight down through the apple. I'm going to do it on the other side and then on both ends. Okay, there is no need to fuss with coring apples. not something I've got time for. I don't know about you. But we end up by cutting around, we end up with coreless, right? ready to be sliced apples. And you're going to want to put these down uh, flat on your surface so that nothing's rolling. You never want to be slicing or cutting anything round without making some kind of a flat cut on one side so that when you put it on your surface, it's stable and safe. All right. And then I get my big girl knife out for slicing and I do this right on my cutting board. And we're going to just go right through here a long way. And I'm just going to make slices about eighth of an inch thick, quarter of an inch. Somewhere between an eighth and a quarter of an inch thick, kind of like that. So no big chunky apples. Okay. These would be a proper uh, slice even for a tart. Um, and this helps them cook through quick enough so that your crisp topping uh, doesn't get overdone in the oven. So I'm going to just go through and slice these up. And then we're going to need to put in some lemon juice. Apples, once they're peeled, 
the flesh will start getting brown. By the time you finish your bowl, you don't want a bunch of brown apple slices in your bowl. So you're gonna wanna put some juice on those. All right, slice through, just some nice, you don't wanna be able to see through them, but you want them something like that. Okay, they don't have to be perfect, but they do need to all be similar in size. You don't wanna um, have fat sections and thin sections because they won't cook at the same time. All right, down the side of the core. Down the side again, oh, all right. And there, and there. So depending on how much you had to trim off your apples, you'll have some different shapes going on with these. Now, I just went down next to the core and I, I went a little too close. I've still got some there, but that's all right. I can just go ahead and just trim that back a little bit more. And we'll be all set. All right, so again, I'm gonna go ahead and slice all these up. You don't have to watch. And I'll be back for the next step. And I'm back. So now I've sliced up all my apples. I had this big bowl here, kind of mounded up with some small apples. And this is what I got by the time I got done peeling and slicing them. They're all pretty uniform in thickness, um, no matter how long or short they are. And I have enough here for two crisps. Uh, I'm gonna do an apple crisp pie, and then I'm gonna do a plain apple crisp without the crust. And I may skim a few off and do this little pan of apple crisp for my neighbor who gave me the apples. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have to put some lemon juice on these. Part of that is for flavoring the pies and part of it is for keeping the apples from going any browner than they are <laughs> with me uh, stopping to film and all that. So what you wanna do is Slice this lemon in half. <clears throat> All right, lots of seeds in there. I'm gonna just pop those out real quick. And I'm going to use my lemon reamer. I love my lemon reamer. Um, I bought one that's made of wood. It's olive wood and it I think I paid about $12 for this and it is gonna last me a long, long time. It's got nice deep grooves in the wood and a nice point. And what you wanna do is just take your lemon in one hand, put your reamer right in toward the center, hold, hold your lemon nice and firmly, and then you're gonna push in and twist at the same time into your bowl. Now. No matter how strong you are, you will never get as much lemon juice out of your lemon by squeezing it with your hand. It's just not gonna happen. This reamer destroys all the pulp in there and you end up with basically a lemon cup. There's nothing left in there. But I'm gonna just squeeze with my hand to get everything that's sitting on the edge of the peel in there. All right, so we're gonna take this lemon juice. I'm gonna just pull the rest of the seeds out of here because I don't wanna bite one of those in my pie. And I'm gonna take this and we're gonna pour it right over the apples. And we're gonna mix this up with our hands, okay? When you're mixing coarse items like this, it's very difficult to be using a spoon or anything for this, you know, we have two perfectly good mixing tools right on the ends of our arms here. Um, and if you don't, how about it with a spoon? All right, so we're gonna just set that one aside and I'm gonna do my second bowl. And my dish back here. 
sometimes the lemons have a lot of seeds and sometimes they don't. But I don't want to be eating them. All right, look at all that juice. Get the most out of your produce, okay? You're paying good money, hard-earned money for your food. Don't be throwing half of it away because you're not using the right tool for the job. There's a few things that you need, a few basic things that you need in the kitchen for cooking and baking. And I will actually um, be making a video about that for beginning cooks and bakers, things that really are essential for you. And they're not, you don't have to spend a ton of money on these things. But as you go and you start doing more and more baking, you can start collecting a tool every once in a while that's going to help you. Uh, I don't have a ton of gadgets. I went through a phase where, um, where I thought that that was really cool. And now I have maybe just like maybe four or five gadgety things and this is one of them and it's fantastic so the other thing I like to do that my aunt taught me when I was young is whenever I'm cooking I have a sink full of nice soapy dishwater I don't have a dishwasher here in the cottage so uh, rather than waiting until the end and I've got all these dishes to do I just keep washing each individual thing and cleaning up my workspace. All right, this makes it a lot easier to cook, get things done. You don't run out of room for things. All right, and uh, that is a free tip for you. I was very fortunate growing up to have three generations of women above me teaching me in the kitchen, and I learned a lot just by being sat up on the counter or stood in a chair next to wherever they were working and just watching, watching their hands, watching how they handled things and sliced things and peeled things. And um, my great grandmother was a great baker. Um, she made a lot of simple things, but she was very good at them. She had, she got very adept with her hands. And I have her recipe book. It was one of the things that um, I was gifted when she passed away. And it's funny because a lot of the recipes in there, and this is why I'm a fly by the seat of your pants baker, they say things like, add flour till right consistency. Or a spoonful of lard. Or, you know, nothing was really direct. So if you didn't have the spoon that she used always for measuring those things. Um, I don't really remember her having measuring spoons, honestly. I think she used a teaspoon, like for your tea, out of the drawer for anything she needed a teaspoon of. And anything over that was the next biggest size spoon for a tablespoon. And then when she was talking about adding like lard or something like that to make biscuits or whatever it was this big silver mixing spoon that she had that was the spoonful so I've had to um, kind of adapt a little bit but because I was able to sit and watch I know what things are supposed to look like what the consistency is supposed to be so those are things I want to share with you as as I make videos for you and share my family recipes I'm not going to have anyone really to pass my recipes down to, and I don't want them to just die. They're really good. I had really good cooks in my family, uh, and I don't think that those things should be lost. I think everyone should be able to enjoy them. I'm not going to have secret recipes <laughs> that I won't share because that's what I can do for the people I loved who aren't here anymore is to share all those beautiful recipes that they shared with me. All right, that being said, uh, you don't have to have had what I had because we have YouTube, 
and the internet, and you can learn how to do anything now. So I'm glad that you're here um, so I can share this recipe with you today. All right, so now we're gonna move on to our sugar and spices. So I'm going to use today uh, a couple of things. I'm gonna use a teaspoon of cinnamon, and I'm gonna put half in each batch here. And then I'm gonna use a teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. What? Yes, pumpkin pie spice. Pumpkin pie spice has cinnamon, ginger, lemon peel, which we want to bring out the, the flavor of the apples. It's a nice bright flavor in the pie. Nutmeg, cloves, and cardamom. It's a great spice mix. It's all the wonderful fall flavors. Um, and I just do that extra cinnamon because I like, I like my pie a little cinnamony. And so again, I'm gonna do half of this in one, half in the other. Okay. And then I've got about a third of a cup of brown sugar. And I'm gonna just taste one of my apples because if I don't know how tart my apple is, I don't know how much sugar I need to put in. That is a really bright, tart, crisp apple. This is gonna make good apple crisp pie. Um, but they're, they're pretty tart, plus I've got the lemon juice on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a third of a cup in each one of these bowls. All right. If you have sweet apples, go ahead and cut back on that. Don't be married to my recipes, okay? I think it's good to develop a sense of flavor and flavor profiles and tasting things along the way because there are variations when you're cooking or baking depending on the humidity if you're making, you know, biscuits or pie crust or uh, bread and stuff like that, it, you'll need less liquid than you, than you would on a dry day, for instance. So I'm just breaking up that sugar. All right. I'm going to tilt this down a little bit for you. So this is what we've got so far. We've got the lemon juice, a third of a cup of brown sugar, a half a teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice in each and a half a teaspoon of extra of cinnamon in each. All right, so I'm gonna just go in and get that all incorporated. I want all my apples to have that nice little coating of flavor. Now the crisp topping is also gonna have spices in it. So if you're thinking you know, I don't know if that's enough spice on the apples. Just trust me, okay? It's enough, All right? You want the apples to shine, okay? And we're not making cinnamon pie. <laughs> All right, this one. Okay, so this is gonna be our base. And I'm so excited. I'm gonna preheat my oven now to 350 degrees. And let that get up to heat while I'm making the crisp topping. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is flour. So if you're gluten free, and I know a lot of people are nowadays, and sometimes I prefer to eat uh, gluten free a lot of the time, honestly. Uh, gluten's not great for your system in general, it's inflammatory. Um, so when I wanted to go gluten-free, I use the Bob's Red Mill one-to-one -one baking flour. You can substitute this in any recipe you have, same amount as you would use regular flour. This has a, a great um, texture and flavor and everything. It doesn't make your recipe um, odd. They come out the same as they do with the regular flour, in my opinion. Uh, now, I will draw the line at, at bread um, because you also need to add some other things with the flour if you're doing bread. But for this, we're all set. 
So I'm going to just put that aside. And to my apples, I'm going to be adding a little bit of flour. So what that's going to do is as the apples cook, they're going to get juicy. And you don't want apple crisp soup in your pie. The flour will adhere to the apples and as they cook, it will make a nice thick um, juice, okay? When you get apple pie, pre-baked apple pies at the grocery store, they have this gel-like substance. I don't know what that is, but it's gross and there's no need of that. <laughs> we just want apples, okay? But we don't want them runny. Uh, so I'm gonna just put a tablespoon of flour in each bowl and mix that in with the apples before I put them in my pans. One tablespoon. It doesn't take a lot, but you just want the apples to get coated. Sprinkle that on. And then again, I'm going to just mix them up with my fingers real quick. Okay, so here's why we're doing this. You see this puddle on the bottom of the bowl? That's because as soon as you put the sugar on your apples, it's going to start pulling liquid out of your apples. Okay, so we've already got liquid in there that we don't need, but the flour is going to counteract that. And when we put these apples in our pans, we're going to we're going to take them out with our fingers like this. Okay, and we're going to let that juice drip off. All right, because you're going to still get more out of them once they're in the pie. All right, apples are ready. I'm so excited. It smells really good just with the spices that I've put in already. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is get our pans ready. So I have a traditional pie plate we're gonna use for the apple crisp pie. And then I have a casserole dish that's a little deeper and we're gonna use this for the plain apple crisp. And if I have enough apples, I will make this for my neighbor. But if I don't, I will just bring them some pie. All right, so I'm going to use, for today, I'm gonna to use a ready-made crust uh, because I will do a separate video for making homemade pie crust. It's really simple. Um, but it's a step that I don't have time to do today. So if you are on a little bit of a time pinch like I am, there is nothing wrong with using some good quality pre-made pie crust. Okay, so I'm just going to fit this in here. Roll it. Alright. Let me tilt this down for you. Get it up on the sides. We're only doing a bottom crust on this. So you just need to fit it in there. All right. Make sure there's no holes in the bottom. My crust split across here, so I'm just tapping it, sticking it back together. All right, bring it in. All right, now I'm gonna take a fork a regular table fork and I'm going to go around the crust and I'm going to just make little holes and this helps when you first put the pie in to keep it from bubbling up. I tend to do that with most of my pies and it's just something I saw my grandmother and my great-grandmother do so I'm doing it. All right, now I'm going to take my apples. 
Oh, actually, I'm not going to take my apples. I want those apples to go in right before this goes in the oven. I'm going to set that aside. This one with the stoneware uh, for the apple crisp, I'm going to go ahead and use some non-stick spray in here just as a layer between the apples so that I don't get a crusty, you know, burnt edge on here. So I'll just grab that real quick. Sorry, I wasn't previously prepared with my non-stick spray. Okay, I'm going to set that aside. And the next thing we need to do is make our crisp topping before we put the apples in our crust. All right, I am going to do this one because I don't need to wait for that. The apple crisp just has the apples in the bottom. Now I know some people put in, they like to put in raisins or nuts or things like that. Those sound yummy too. But today I'm just going to make a traditional plain apple crisp. All right. See all that juice that we have left in the bowl? All right. Put that in the sink. Doesn't that look delicious? Get all those little spices on there. Okay, everybody, I think we're ready to get going on our crisp topping. I've got my food processor out. This is what I would call, I know it's an appliance, but I would also call it a gadget. Um, and this is something that I use a lot. And you can tell maybe on camera um, by the condition of my food processor that I use it a lot. Uh, I did a lot of um, nut crusts for pies one year, and it really damaged the <laughs> you know the look of the uh, plastic but this is if you can afford one this is a pretty valuable tool to have if you can't then you can make your crisp topping right in a bowl it, it, with your fingers it doesn't matter um, using your fingers um, creates a little bit of heat and we're going to use cold butter um, for the topping because we want the butter to melt as it bakes, we don't want our crisp topping to be a paste, which will happen if your butter is too warm. So if you don't have a food processor, I want you to just cut your butter up into nice small, literally like little small chunks and um, mix everything together. So we're gonna use oats. Now I have um, the Bob's Red Mill gluten-free rolled oats. You need to use, in my opinion, the old-fashioned rolled oats, not the instant or quick cooking type, because the quick cooking type will get mushy really fast. So you want to start out with your whole grain rolled oats. Uh, whether you go gluten-free or not uh, is up to you. There really um, is no difference texture or taste-wise, anything else. Okay, so we're going to use three cups of oats. We're going to use some all-purpose flour, uh, and you can use, again, the gluten-free flour, one, the Bob's Red Mill one-to-one -one baking flour, um, or regular all-purpose flour. We're going to use some more brown sugar for our topping, uh, cold butter, and some more spices. Now, uh, also what I like to add to mine uh, is a little bit of granola. Uh, it just gives another little flavor profile mixed in with the other ingredients and a little bit of crunch uh, and it's really good when, when it's all together. So if you want to do that as well, have at it. You could use really any kind of uh, granola that you like. Um, it would be good with berries or nuts or whatever in it. I might not do chocolate, but uh, Anyway, so we're going to get started with this. We don't want to pulse this too long because I don't want to break my oats down too far. We're only going to just pulse until we get the butter broken up and the um, flour, everything all is all incorporated uh, and crumbly. All right, so I'm going to start with my oats. And I'm doing three cups because I'm doing two the pie and the crisp, all right? 
And I like a lot of crisp topping, okay? I don't like a skimpy crisp topping on this. All right, and then we're gonna use flour. We're gonna use two cups of flour. Almost. I warned you. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna take a stick of butter and I'm gonna just cut it into chunks, little teaspoon chunks here. Those in. All right, these are what we wanna get incorporated and get broken down a little bit. You don't want big puddles of butter um, in your crisp because you just want a nice even texture everywhere. I'm gonna start out with one stick of butter and it's very humid and everything today. I'm gonna to just see what that does. If I need to add a little bit more, I can, but I can't take it out, so. All right, and then our spices. Again, I used, um, for this double batch, I used uh, two teaspoons of cinnamon, one teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice, and about a quarter of a teaspoon of extra nutmeg which I love nutmeg, and I love it in apple pie. All right, and my donuts, but that's another day. All right, so I'm gonna just sprinkle all the spices over this. You could smell that, awesome. All right, I'm gonna just put a handful of this granola, not a lot. And then we're going to end with our brown sugar. All right, so let's get a. Where'd my cup go? There it is. Loading this uh, food processor up, I really. Normally, I only make one of these at a time. And it wouldn't hurt if I had. <laughs> <laughs> the 12 cup food processor instead, but I don't, so. All right, we're gonna just see how that works. All right, get my lid on here, and like I said, I'm just gonna pulse, sorry about that. I never leave cupboard doors open, I don't know what came over me. All right, so, let's move this over so you can see. I'm gonna just balance this here. And I'm going to use my pulse button. And that's going to pull, see, all that butter is being pulled down toward the blades from the spinning action. All the spices are getting blended in. Alright. Alright, so what I'm looking for is for my butter to be in little chunks. It's looking, it's looking good, but I do still, I still have a few larger ones in there, so we're gonna pulse a few more times. All right, that should do it. All right, so this is crumbly, right? It's not sticking together but it's got lots of little bits of butter in there. All right, I'm gonna take a spoon. Don't worry, this can't start without the uh, cover on. All right, I'm just gonna stir this up a little bit because I really filled this up and I don't want stuff to be stuck in a little pile down there. I'm gonna go ahead, based on how this looks, and put it in a bowl, and I'm gonna add, I'm gonna cut up some of my butter nice and small, and add that in. All right. See, when I, when I squeeze this, I get an initial kind of chunk. So I know it's starting to kind of come together really well, but I want to have a little bit more butter. I think it's just a little 
too powdery. And if I keep doing it in the food processor, I'm going to have oatmeal dust. So I don't want that. So let's see. I need a bowl big enough to do that, don't I? mixer bowl. That's my other uh, appliance gadget. That was a gift. If I hadn't been given it as a gift, I probably wouldn't have one because they're not cheap. But any stand mixer that you can afford uh, would be a great asset for me to have. It'll really come in handy. See how that's kind of sticking together in a little clump? That's what we want. We want it to start doing that. All right. I'm going to move my food processor out of the way. And I'm going to just add a little more butter. I never heard anything. All right. We'll do, I think I'll do a half a stick. you can see. Right. I take that half a stick of butter, right? cut it in pats, kind of like you get at the restaurant, about that size. And then I'm going to take each one and cut it into nine pieces. So three, like that. So you have a nice small little lump of butter. Nine pieces. Okay, and then I'm just going to separate them a little bit, put them in there. All right, so I can cut all of this at the same time. I don't need to do each piece separately. So three, and then cut each one of these in two. All right, and you want to do this fairly quickly because, like I said, you don't want your butter to get too warm and start melting on you before you get it in the oven. In. And I'm just going to mix these in with my fingers real quick. All right. All right, I'm going to crush them a little bit, not a lot, just a little. Get them incorporated with all my oats. Okay, see how I'm just lifting that up and kind of crumbling it into the butter. And I'll start getting a topping that's going to stick together just a little bit more because when this comes out you don't want a pow anything powdery okay you want this to all you want that butter to all melt into the flour and oatmeal and come together all right just take a minute I'm trying I'm going to go quickly so I don't have to handle the butter too much, but it's still, it's still in lumps, so that's good. They're just smaller ones. Crumbly. I guess you could call it kind of an apple crumble, too. Is that a thing? All right. This is looking much better. All right. I think we've got... About enough butter in there now. Although I'm not adverse to putting a little bit right on the top before it goes in the oven. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to take my apples for the pie and get them into my crust. And again, we're going to do this with our fingers so that none of that juice. There's a good amount of juice sitting on the bottom of that bowl. We don't want that in the pie. Okay. Pack them right in there. Apples will cook down. That means that as they cook, they're going to get softer and they're going to start breaking down. Okay. And it looks like I've got enough to just do this little dish for my neighbor. 
Mm, which I should probably spray first. My daughter does not like pie crust, so hence the plain apple crisp and then the apple crisp pie for me. And I'll just take a few apples off the pie. Alright, that is looking good. I think I got just the right amount of apples to do all three things I wanted to. Now, as far as timing on these when they go in the oven, uh, you really, like I said, depending on how you like your apples to be cooked, um, is going to make the difference. Also, everybody's oven temp is a little bit off. Unless you have a commercial range and you have a temperature gauge in there, you are going to need to check. Okay, I say 350 for these pies. I've got nice thin slices. Um, I don't have a top, you know, pie crust on anything, but my oven probably isn't exactly at 350, so I'm going to have to check them. So I'm going to set my timer for about 40 minutes, and then I'm going to check and see how they're doing, and if they're the right consistency for me, I'm going to pull them out. The topping will certainly be done by then. Um, but if I need to leave it in for another few minutes, I can also do that without any danger. So I'm going to just take my crisp topping now. And I'm going to pour it on. I'm going to do the pie first. I'm going to just take a little bit at a time. Spread it all the way to the edges of my pie crust. Tuck it right down in there. All right. When the apples start cooking, the juices start coming out, and that also helps to cook the crisp topping that's, uh, you know, under, right next to the, on top of the apples. So you get cooking action from top and bottom. All right, you have to look at this. Like, right, look at that. Like, I put a nice, generous amount of topping on there. I patted it down just a little bit so that it's not going to fall off the pie in transport. But that's a good amount of topping. All right, I'll put that one aside. Do the same thing with the crisp. I'm going to just turn this camera down here so you can see what I'm doing this time. All right, next I'm going to do my neighbor's little crisp. Make sure that's got enough for them. So I'm covering it. I don't want to see any of the apples. Okay? And I want to mound it up just a little bit. And then pr I'm pressing it down, but I'm not pressing super hard. Okay. A little piece of butter tried to get away. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not going to happen. All right. And then some for this crisp. Oh, look at that. This is going to be so delicious. Now, I do have some extra. That's okay. We can probably cut the recipe back. You can probably do a half a cup less on the flour and a half a cup less on the oats if you're doing this many. And I'll put a recipe down uh, in, in below and a link for... that for you. All right, I'm just gonna, I'm just adding a little extra to any holes I see. I want my pie to be totally encapsulated with crisp topping. All right. I, my mouth is watering. Like, <laughs> I can't wait for this to come out of the oven. So the only other thing I'm going to tell you that I'm going to do is I'm going to Make sure I put both of these on to cookie sheets. Um, you could just put aluminum foil around um, because there's nothing worse than apples juice falling down into your oven and burning. It smells terrible. All right, so I'm gonna do that, get them in the oven, and then I'll be back when they're done. Okay, we are back and our pies are done. 
And the first one is our apple crisp pie with a regular pie crust, apple filling, and an apple crisp topping. These are still pretty warm, but they've sat for a little while. This one is the apple crisp. Now you'll notice on this one, we have this mounded right up with the apples and the topping so that it filled the pan and was domed over, which is why I put it on the cookie sheet in case it bubbled over. It didn't bubble over, but look how much it's settled. Okay, it's down lower than the rim of the pan now. So when you start these, you wanna make sure that you have a good amount in there because they do settle down. This is the one I made for my neighbor, same thing. It was, it was mounted right up to the top, okay? So I checked my apples after uh, 40 minutes. They were just a little underdone for me uh, based on my oven, so I let them uh, cook for about another 10 minutes and pulled them out and then I let them sit to cool and they're still hot when you pull them out so they'll continue cooking a little bit uh, after they're done. Uh, I probably could have taken it out at 40 and let it finish cooking as it cooled. So I'm going to just cut the pie so you can see what that looks like. Hopefully it's not too warm. So we'll just take this. So see how that topping is nice and crispy, crispy crumbly, it's going to be so good. All right, loosen it away from the edge with the knife just a little, and then make sure we've got a clear cut through all the way through the crust. The first piece is always, always the hardest to get out. Ooh, and there it is. Look at that. Mm, layers and layers of those thinner sliced apples. As this cools, that will get a little firmer and not crumble quite as much. But I don't mind. And there it is. Nice, crispy, delicious topping. Now, about when I pulled it out at 40 minutes, um, I did decide to melt the other half stick of butter and I poured it over the top just with a teaspoon and drizzled it all over uh, just to make sure that everything was moist enough on the top and it sunk right in. And that gives it just such a nice little buttery flavor. So I'm going to go ahead and just try it and make sure that the amount of spices I gave you was right. Oh, still warm. Mm. Perfect. All right. I'm going to suggest you cook that for an hour. Um, but to, again, just test your apples so that they're the way you like them. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make my apple crisp pie. And if you did, just hit the like button down bottom and hit the subscribe button so you can come back and learn some more of my recipes. It was great to have you today. Bye.